King Charles's coronation is coming up and we are going to see Camilla be crowned Queen of England and King Charles being crowned the King of England. And there will be two processionals, one from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Abbey and one from Westminster Abbey all the way through the streets of London back to Buckingham Palace. And they will have two different coaches. You know the coaches that look like the Cinderella Prince Charming coaches or the fairy tale coaches? They are indeed that. One is called the Gold State Coach and the other one is called the Diamond Jubilee State Coach. So what is the story behind these coaches? There is some history behind them. The drive in the morning from Buckingham Palace to Westminster Abbey will be in the newer coach, which is the Diamond Jubilee State Coach. This was delivered to Queen Elizabeth II in 2014. And it was used then for the first time at the state opening of Parliament of that year. It's beautifully upholstered. It has primrose yellow silk and also fitted into the interior are very specific and amazing wood. It's like a microcosm of British and world history. There are woods from royal residences, from explorations, and from other countries and nations. Now the vehicle is not as small as the other coaches. It's taller than any car that you've ever seen on the road today. It has this huge gold crown at the very top. It's carved with the oak from the HMS Victory, which was one of the Royal Navy's 18th century flagships. The procession is going to leave Buckingham Palace and head down the mall, accompanied by the sovereign escort of the household cavalry. It travels along Parliament Street and to Westminster Abbey, where the services start at 11 a.m., which is 6 a.m. Eastern time. Now, this coach was built in Australia by a coach builder. Who knew that there were still people assigned to build coaches? But his name is W.J. Frecklington. They originally said that, listen, Frecklington created this on his own. This is not an official state coach. Frecklington was saying, okay, but the coach was endorsed, even though it wasn't commissioned by Buckingham Palace. Coach which was eventually purchased by the Royal Collection Trust. Frecklington, the coach designer, said that his intention was to really encapsulate the history and heritage of the United Kingdom by incorporating materials from Britain's historic buildings, ships, and artifacts. Great events in history, figures, and objects that were directly related to more than 30 kings and queens of England, Scotland, and Ireland. Frecklington funded the construction of the coach as a private initiative with some help from the Australian government. With this grant, the coach weighs 2.75 tons. It's 18 feet long, 11 feet high. Doesn't look like it, but it has electric windows, heating, and hydraulic stabilizers. It's much more comfortable to ride in than the Gold State coach. It has air conditioning, timber segments, also from the Tower of London, Westminster Abbey, St. Paul's Cathedral, Edinburgh Castle, Henry VIII's flagship Mary Rose, the Mayflower, Balmoral Castle, Blenheim, Durham Cathedral, Hampton Court, Kensington Palace, Lincoln Cathedral, the Liverpool Anglican Cathedral, St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, York Minster. It also has material from the Scottish government, from the Stone of Scone, from the Franklin Expedition of 1845, from the Royal Yacht HMY Britannia, HMS Endeavour, Battle of Hastings, Big Ben, a Battle of Britain Spitfire, and part of a musket ball from the Battle of Waterloo. There's also segments that are related to Shakespeare, Sir Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, Florence Nightingale, and other famous figures are also included as well as digital copies of the Magna Carta and the Doomsday Book. The two door handles were made by a New Zealand jeweler and they are individually decorated with 24 diamonds on 130 sapphires. The lamps were handmade by Edinburgh Crystal. So it's posh. You can't put a number on the value of this beautiful Diamond Jubilee State Coach. It is something that people will have a real treat to be able to see in the street. So that is what coach they're going to be riding in luxury from Buckingham Palace to Westminster. But what about the way back? What is the other coach? After the coronation service is what they call the Royal Procession, which is leaving Westminster to go back to Buckingham Palace, which includes a tour around London 
prior to the time that they get there, which will be much shorter than the queen has made in the past, but they will be traveling in this other coach, which is called the Gold State Coach, following the coronation. It also features armed forces from across the Commonwealth and the British Overseas Territories and all services of the armed forces of the United Kingdom alongside the Sovereign's bodyguard and royal watermen. On the way back, Charles and Camilla will be riding in the Gold State Coach which has been used in every coronation since William IV in 1831. This coach is nearly four meters tall. It's over seven meters long. It weighs four tons. Because of that, it can only be used at a walking pace, which really adds to the majesty and stateliness of the great royal procession. In other words, on the way there, it's going to be a much faster ride, a much smoother ride. On the way back, it's a slower and more deliberate ride with more of an ability for the public to be able to see. Very few monarchies have a coach that is able to function as well as this, that is as old as this. This coach is covered in painted panels that really represent what George III, who was monarch when the coach was built in, this, in 1762, believed he would bring to the nation. So even though it was used since William IV in 1831, it is as old as George III. Once they are back at Buckingham Palace, the armed forces in the parade will offer a royal salute to the royal couple followed by three cheers from assembled service personnel. It was commissioned in 1760 by Francis Rodden Hastings. He was the first Marquis of Hastings for King George III. It was commissioned for 3.5 million pounds, which is in US dollars, about 4.1 million. It was completed in 1762. It is the coaches of all coaches. It has the history, it has the gold, it has everything. It was used for the coronation of every British monarch from William IV until the Second World War, the coach was the monarch's usual transport to and from Parliament at the state opening. The coach weighs four tons, is 29 feet long, 12 feet high. It's gilded and features painting panels by Giovanni Battista Cipriani, three cherubs on the roof, which represents England, Scotland, and Ireland, four tritons, one at each corner representing Britain's imperial power. War was drawing to a close when the coach was built in 1762. It's like a chariot and it's pulled by eight horses that wear Moroccan harnesses. It lacks more modern comfort. It's not a comfortable thing. That's why it goes slow. In the words of King William IV, a formal naval officer being driven by the Gold State coach, was like being on board a ship tossing in a rough sea. Queen Victoria complained of the distressing oscillation of the cabin. She would often refuse to ride in the Gold State coach. And then King George the Sixth said that his journey from the palace to Westminster Abbey for his coronation was one of the most uncomfortable rides I've ever had in my life. He had the coach overhauled after the Second World War to rubberize the iron-bound wheels. This would afford at least some comfort to the passengers. Queen Elizabeth II referred to her coronation journey in the coach as horrible and not very comfortable, which is possibly why it wasn't used for her Diamond Jubilee, having previously featured in her Silver and Golden Jubilee. It was brought back as pageant for her Platinum Jubilee celebrations. Royal coachmen are traditionally clean shaven and the horses are always Windsor Greys. This is what we should expect, that the king and the queen are riding in style with these ancient, very symbolic vehicles. One that was a gift and was acquired by the Royal Collection from Australia more recently with electric windows and air conditioning and symbolism and materials from every single historic event that you can think of. The other being old and gold and heavy and uncomfortable and yet that is what we will be seeing for the transportation of the king and queen of england during their processions to and from buckingham palace so i'm deanna from hot for history please subscribe and like my video for more interesting royal news and quirky history facts that i bet your history teacher would never dare to teach you